Hello from Midtown Manhattan. I'm Andy Mendelson, the Associate Dean of the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. Thank you for joining us for this very special occasion. I wish we could be doing this ceremony live and in person, but I hope everyone is still in the mood to celebrate our amazing graduates. Today is our school's 14th graduation. It is amazing to think how far we've come. Our alumni are producing impactful journalism around the world, and many are taking on leadership roles throughout the industry. It is essential to thank those who have supported us on this journey. The Newmark J School at CUNY is unique among journalism schools with its curricular creativity and institutional nimbleness. The school continues to be the recipient of strong support from CUNY and the city and state of New York. Without all this support, we wouldn't be where we are today. Many people have played essential roles in getting the members of the class of 2020 to this day and place. The faculty and staff have done their best to prepare them for a profession that's seemingly changing by the minute. Family and friends have provided encouragement and support, and the graduates have done the hard work to get here, spending hours and hours reporting and writing, pitching, shooting, recording, editing, crying, screaming, and of course, supporting each other. And did I mention freaking out a few times along the way? And everyone needs to be recognized for working under extraordinary circumstances. Faculty and staff pivoted to remote learning. Students suddenly became remote reporters, learning a whole new set of skill sets. And everyone did this and more while caring for themselves, their families, and their friends during this crazy time. I am honored to introduce the Chancellor of the City University of New York, Felix Matos Rodriguez. Two years ago, Dr. Matos Rodriguez became the Chancellor after serving as President of Queens College and before that of Ostos Community College in the Bronx. Born and raised in San Juan, Puerto Rico, Dr. Matos Rodriguez earned a bachelor's degree in Latin American Studies from Yale University and then a PhD in History from Columbia University. He's an award-winning historian, a gifted teacher, and a talented administrator. He continues to bring a warm, personal touch to the CUNY community, and we are grateful for his leadership. Please join me in welcoming Chancellor Matos Rodriguez. It is great to be here. Thank you, Dean Barlett, and to the entire J School community for inviting me. I am thrilled to extend my enthusiastic congratulations to a very special group of graduates, the tenacious and tireless class of 2020. You have overcome so much to get to this point, showing the same resolve and grit that you summoned when you were racing to nail down a story under the pressure of a deadline. The period in which you pursued and completed your degrees has been challenging and intense, with so much to dig into on so many fronts. I realize how difficult it must have been to make the pivot to distance learning in a field that demands and requires an active presence. I've been deeply impressed by the work that has come out from the J School during this time as you and your professors utilize all the tools at your disposal. You leverage the full capabilities of your craft to tell the stories that needed to be told. In these uncertain times, when the truth is under attack and our society is reckoning with the difficult matters of social, economic, and racial inequality, it might only fail to you to confront authority and to ensure that truth and justice prevails. That is also why now, more than ever, we need diverse voices in newsrooms, reporters who can pull from their experience and perspectives to make sense of the moment. This is why your Spanish language journalism program is so essential to covering Latinx communities in the U.S. and abroad. Felicidades a los graduandos y suerte dando la batalla para que los medios, los de hoy y los del futuro, sean más inclusivos y diversos para que representen y cubran más a fondo las comunidades que sirven y que representan. I know your keynote speaker, the award-winning broadcast journalist Soledad O'Brien, saludos a Soledad, agrees 
that our CUNY students bring a unique and vital perspective to their storytelling efforts. I want to commend the J School faculty who always find ways to be skilled educators even as they set the standard for excellence in their field. Your collective efforts have kept the J School on the front lines of the pandemic. You help memorialize New Yorkers who have died from COVID-19 through the city's Missing Them project. You investigated and profiled the death of health workers who lost their lives caring for patients. You were all personally affected by this health crisis and you were still able to endure the challenge to obtain your degree. You found many ways to keep telling stories. I send my heartfelt congratulations to you, to your families, and to the entire campus community. Class of 2020, your strength and courage will never be forgotten. Felicidades and congratulations. Thank you, Chancellor. We love watching our graduates venture out into the world of journalism, tackling important stories and keeping those in power honest. Happily, our alumni stay in touch, sharing with us their successes, and we especially love when they return for a visit. Our next speaker, Katie Honan, graduated from the J School in 2010, and just one month later landed her first job as social media editor, as the first social media editor, and later a web editor at News 4 New York. During her time there, she won two local Emmy Awards, one National Emmy Award, and an Edward R. Murrow Award for the coverage of 2012's Superstorm Sandy. Today, Katie is a reporter for the Wall Street Journal, where she reports on City Hall in New York City. She's extensively covered the COVID pandemic. One of the most challenging aspects, aspects about doing her job during the pandemic is for her to realize that no matter how hard she has worked, how many questions she has asked, how many people she has tried to hold accountable, so many people, so many of her neighbors would still die of this horrible virus. However, Katie is still a determined journalist with an obsession to reveal what people in power don't want the rest of us to know and to share the stories of people who may not otherwise have their stories told. When Katie reflects on the future of journalism, she says that some people are too obsessed with the future of journalism as a concept of bells and whistles. What she does is no different from American journalist Nellie Bly. Go out and talk to people, check the facts, and then write about it. There is sometimes too much focus on the future and not enough on strengthening the basis of what we do as journalists. And Katie, the J School appreciates all that you do. Please welcome Katie Honan. Thank you so much to Dean Bartlett and Dean Mendelson for allowing me this honor to briefly address our soon-to-be alums. Ten years ago, I was where you all are now, sitting in a cap and gown and ready for my graduation. Today, I thought back to just how special that moment was, gathered with the classmates who became my closest friends, praised by our toughest professors, celebrating with my family in the audience. And it makes me think about just how much it really sucks for all of you that this year's graduation is so much different. There's really no other way to put it, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm certain that when you started this journey here at the Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York, that you never imagined yourself graduating in front of a computer screen. I'm sure you didn't imagine a lot of what you just went through this past year. You're in good company. Today is meant to be the celebration and culmination of a year and a half or more of hard work, growth, and possibility with your loved ones around you, plenty of hugs and smiles and laughs, and of course, free food and alcohol from the J School. But today still is a day for celebration, even if it looks a little different. This year, you got through journalism school amidst a backdrop of a deadly pandemic that uprooted everything through nationwide demonstrations against police brutality and systemic racism, 
and your own shifting understanding of what role you play in all of it. There have been so many times we all just wanted to forget 2020 ever happened, but we shouldn't. You were the class of 2020, which will always mean something going forward. Let this year strengthen you. Let it reaffirm your job as a journalist, despite those who attack the free press, those who fear a vibrant media, and those who seek to hurt and intimidate people for telling the truth, whatever that may be. Not everyone understands what journalists do or why we do it. After today, you'll continue to make sacrifices in pursuit of your career, in the pursuit of your dreams. Journalism is an exciting industry, but it can also be a little lonely. Your friends and family may love you, they may be proud of you, but they won't always get it. They won't always read, listen to, or watch everything you do. The chances are even slimmer if there's a paywall, trust me. But your classmates likely will. They're your people now. The people around you, not physically at this moment, but they're here. They will be your support for many years after this one. I've taken my CUNY classmates with me my entire journalism career. These relationships have helped me with jobs, with sources. I've celebrated classmates' weddings, their babies, their successes, and we've comforted each other when things did not go as we wanted them to. I've been as proud to be an alum of this school as I am of most other things because I know how important the City University of New York is to New York City. I know that CUNY helps improve people's lives and is improving journalism by graduating a more talented, flexible, and diverse group of journalists. The legacy continues with all of you. You have all accomplished something remarkable, even more so given the circumstances. What you learned here will help you tell the important stories around the world, making sense of the unimaginable. The skills you've been taught here make you stronger people and citizens, regardless of where your career path takes you. You will do things in the next decade that you can never imagine. Hopefully, they will be much better things than surviving this year. But remember, you did all of this in spite of 2020. So you can do anything. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you, Katie. I am honored to work with Dean Sarah Bartlett. She is a leader of boundless energy and ideas. She certainly keeps me on my toes. Sarah is a passionate and tireless ambassador for the school, working nonstop to establish new partnerships, new opportunities, and new funding resources to keep the school and its students ahead of the curve. This year, she saw her, saw her raise $1 million for an emergency fund for, to ensure that our students would not have to face extreme financial hardship while trying to complete their studies in this pandemic year. Please join me in welcoming Dean Sarah Bartlett. Thank you, Andy, and greetings to everyone watching online today. While I wish we could all be together in person, I'm excited to be celebrating our 14th commencement today with a wonderful class of 2020. Years from now, when we look back at this time, we will all marvel at what a unique experience this has been. Your education has certainly been defined by major forces beyond our control. One of the strangest and most momentous elections in our nation's history, the powerful grassroots movement that arose demanding a more equitable world in the wake of George Floyd's killing, and a global pandemic that has struck down so many and likely changed how we live forever. I'm so proud of how you've sought to navigate these extraordinary events. No one wanted to rush out of the school in mid-March the way we had to, or pivot to online instruction. But you did it with grace and understanding, and you applied your energy and focus to your classes. Along the way, you were supported by our incredibly dedicated faculty and staff, many of whom are watching online with you today. 
To all of you, you have my deepest respect and admiration. After graduating today, you will be joining an amazingly talented extended family. We now have about 1,000 alumni, and though that may seem small compared to other older, more established schools, our alumni have developed a strong reputation for talent, hard work, and innovation. Many of our alums are already leaders in newsrooms such as the Washington Post, Barron's, Vice, WNYC, and ProPublica. Some are even getting to that point in their careers where they're hiring. So I hope you and your friends and families find creative ways to celebrate your graduation today safely. And then once those celebrations are over, I look forward to watching you do what you do best. Ask tough questions, analyze data and trends, tell important stories for those whose voices are not represented, and join the battle that undoubtedly lies ahead. And once we're able to open our doors safely to everyone again, please come back, hang out in the newsroom, grab a slice in the cafe, and share your adventures and, of course, your stories with us. In the meantime, I wish you all the best. Congratulations and felicidades, class of 2020. Thank you, Dean Bartlett. And now, graduates, it's time to hear from one of your own, Noelle Lilly. When Southern California native Noelle Lilly moved to New York to study journalism in the fall of 2019, she was a bit apprehensive about the winners, but she was willing to endure the cold to live in a city where she could pursue her passion for visual storytelling, cover diverse communities, and immerse herself in the vibrant arts and culture scene. At the Newmark J School, the Arizona State University graduates, graduate says she learned a different approach to journalism that made a lot of sense for her. I used to feel I had to keep a part of myself tucked away, she said, or it would be seen as biased. I now know I can have a perspective in storytelling as a woman, as a black person, and still be balanced and fair. Noelle and her classmates have completed their studies during one of the strangest times uh, and most challenging years in history. She admits to suffering, at times, Zoom fatigue, and she has missed the on-campus social interaction. As she said, I had to tell myself, you're going through a crazy time. It's OK to take a break and not want to get out of bed. Her guilty pleasure has been watching reality TV. Ask her about 90 Day Fiance. But get out of bed, she did. And we know she will continue to do so, accomplishing great things in journalism in the years to come. So please join me in welcoming our 2020 class commencement speaker, Noelle Lilly. Good afternoon, friends, family, students, and distinguished guests. My name is Noelle D. Lilly, and I'm honored to be the student speaker for the class of 2020. Toward the end of one of his most famous books, one of my favorite writers said the following, our moment is too brief, our bodies are too precious, and you are here now and you must live. I've spent a lot of time meditating over these words lately, and on a tough day when I'm feeling invisible or frustrated, I tell myself, my moment is brief, my body is precious, I am here now and I must live. When the class of 2020 had our first day of a grueling two week long orientation, and let's be honest, it was grueling, we were running around Times Square looking like a bizarre cross between Taurus and panhandlers. We sat through an awkward hour-long diversity training. I mean, really, some of us were thinking, what was that? We competed in a news quiz thing. OK, I admit that was kind of fun, but only because my team won. I'm not even going to front. I didn't attend the entire two weeks. Sorry, student affairs. Love you guys. Wait, where was I? Oh, right. But when we had that first day of orientation, I don't think any of us could have ever predicted how our three semesters at the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at CUNY would have turned out. That first semester seems so long ago, and yet I still remember it clearly. When I think back to it, I feel like I spent as much time hanging out as I did learning. And I'll be honest, I didn't come to the J School thinking that I had a ton to learn. Like many of you, I studied journalism in undergrad, but back on the West Coast, best coast, of course. I thought I had this journalism thing under control, but learn I did. 
I learned enough AP style to last a lifetime in craft with Judy Watson and Will Cruz. I learned how to code a website using HTML, temporarily relapsing into my MySpace and Tumblr days, even though as my classmates Yara, Teresa, and Emil Faye will tell you, data class was more of a social hour than anything else. I learned how to create a documentary, falling in love with a, a form of storytelling where the communities I speak to are more than just characters, they're people. I learned how to write about books and movies as more than just a fan, thanks to Jan Simpson, even though she terrified me at first. I learned how to tell a compelling broadcast piece from my bedroom. I fell asleep on the subway more times than I'd like to admit. I listened to my classmates Peter and Michaela talk about rats, each time against my will. I listened to my other classmate, Ambar, rap about the 2020 census, willingly. I ate free pizza, even if I had brought lunch from home, I cried in the whisper room. But through it all, I somehow still made it here to speak to all of you today. All of you who have inspired me and taught me things that I will always remember. We got through this together. Okay, we navigated Zoom classes and socially distanced interviews. And despite the ups and downs, we had our school behind us every step of the way. When I lost my housing due to COVID-19 back in March, I didn't even have to ask for help. Anthony LaViscount of Student Affairs somehow found out and within weeks secured funding for me. I don't know what I would have done without him. Students at other schools haven't been so lucky. When other schools turned their back on their student body, our stepped up to the plate and held our hands through this stressful time. In a year full of losses and grief, this has been a shining light, a light that reminds us to pick one another up in times of trouble, to fight for truth and justice, even when the powers that be aren't listening. So to my family by blood, Thank you for always supporting me in every dream, no matter how big. To my NABJ family, my family through struggle, stay black and stay loud. To my classmates, my family by choice. If you're feeling discouraged or disillusioned, in some days you will feel discouraged and disillusioned. Remember that these systems are designed to break us, but we can't let them. Whether it's unarmed black people being gunned down by police or migrant children being locked in cages, or brown families overseas having the only homes they've ever known destroyed, or millions right here dying at the hands of a virus. It's so easy to despair and lose sight of ourselves, of our purpose. You have to grieve and you have to fight, but you have to still find a way to live at the end of the day. Sometimes this life feels like a never ending balancing act, but it's the only life we've got. There is joy in the struggle, I found that joy here in spite of everything. We are journalists, photographers, podcasters, producers, social media wizards, whizzes, storytellers, and agents of truth. If you ever forget that, let the words of ta Coates remind you. Our moment is too brief. Our bodies are too precious. We are here now and we must live. And I intend to. I hope you do too. Thank you. Thank you, Noelle. When it came time to invite a commencement speaker to address our graduates during this strange and unsettling election year, it wasn't hard to come up with the perfect candidate, Soledad O'Brien. In her 30 years as a broadcast journalist, Soledad could always be counted on to deliver honest, high impact, deeply researched work on politically sensitive and vital topics. Whether it was her recent disturbing documentary about college students, including some from CUNY, who face food insecurity, or her insightful films about the Latino and Black experience of living in America, Soledad's work has changed hearts and minds, and that is unquestionably what has drawn many of our graduates to this profession. Soledad is currently anchoring and producing the Hearst Television political magazine, Matter of Fact with Soledad O'Brien. Previously, she anchored and reported for CNN, NBC, and MSNBC. She's received numerous awards, including three Emmys, a George Peabody Award, and an Alfred I. DuPont Prize. Soledad was named Journalist of the Year by the National Association of Black Journalists in 2010, and one of Newsweek Magazine's 15 People Who Make America Great in 2006. The author of two books, she lives with her husband and four children in Manhattan. We are fortunate that Soledad has been a longtime friend of the Newmark J School. 
When she saw a Twitter thread about mainstream media preferring to hire people from, quote, elite private schools, she wrote, very, very good thread, and one of the reasons my company intern pool always over-indexes in CUNY students, who are amazing, by the way. Since Soledad has 1.3 million Twitter followers, her opinion means a lot. Soledad, we thank you for being willing to record your speech from your home this year, and we look forward to seeing you at a future commencement in person. Please join me in welcoming Soledad O'Brien. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Congratulations, graduates. You whew, have been through a lot. So let's take a moment in the middle of this global pandemic to cheer for you. I want you to say, I've made it. I've done it. I am awesome. I'm going to wait. Go ahead. You're smart and you're hardworking and you, holy cow, are resilient because it requires resilience to navigate through all that you've had to tackle. Life can be tough, life is tough, but you've made it. And you're gonna to need to rely on that as your source of strength as you move forward in life. Young journalists have a real challenge on your hands. Journalism is in the middle of a big transformation and transformations are very hard. Instead of being champions of truth sometimes, some journalists today have embraced the world of celebrity and talk as a stand-in for news. Some journalists even wine and dine and show off their gowns at pricey events with their sources, as if reporting, in fact, were a journey to the Academy Awards. And when it goes awry, as it sometimes does at the White House Correspondents' Dinner or a wacky press conference, we point at each other rather than do some serious self-analysis. Margaret Sullivan of the Washington Post once wrote this about what the American media is doing wrong. She said, trust in the mainstream media is low. A new populism has caught fire all over the Western world. And President Trump constantly pounds the news media as a bunch of out of touch elites who don't represent the interests of real Americans. We angle for opportunities to get airtime, then use it to bloviate rather than inform. And she is right in no place is that more apparent than cable news networks, which have enabled in many cases the rise of lying and bigotry and platforming of hate. Whew. It is a crazy time, but there are some pointers that I have learned that I would like to pass along in the very few minutes that I have to talk to you today. Number one, access journalism is bad. Focus instead on accessible, accessible journalism, the journalism that tells the story of people, real people and what they're struggling with. Just because someone's successful doesn't make them right. You can be a star reporter and still be failing in terms of doing your job well. Pundits are not the press. They serve a different role. They do not have the same job. Do not use pundits in order to move your story forward. The universe has changed, mainly social media, but it doesn't have to change you. Reporting and good reporting should always stay the same no matter what. Think about how you use social media, though, very carefully to forward your stories. Reporting is not a game, and don't report about anything, particularly politics, like it's football, unless you're actually reporting on football. Be the you you want to be. There are lots of important stories to tell, and you do not have to squish those stories internally. Instead, you have to find a place and a platform and a strategy for telling those stories. You will not rest until you're able to do that. Be prepared to argue about that very thing. If you don't think that there are lots of journalists out there who disagree with you, well, then you'd be wrong. One of the greatest things about journalism is arguing over how to tell stories and why to tell stories and who should be in a story and how do we do it successfully and strategically and thoughtfully and journalistically. Those are really good arguments to have. Find those people who in good faith want to have those arguments with you. And here's a really big one. Insist that journalism reflect the human experience in all its complexity and diversity. Otherwise, you perpetuate the fiction of who we are every day. And that's at the heart of why a lot of journalism is out of touch with the rest of the country, that the real news is fake news. The reason we're often choosing the shiny objects over the, the reality. Media itself isn't very diverse right now, which hurts our credibility with the public and is skewing our worldview as well. We often see panels that look like an ad for a clothing store, diverse faces, but the opinions sometimes all come from the same perspective, just leaning left and right. 
That's partly because there's very little diversity of anything. All minority groups account for just 22.4% of TV journalists and 13% of radio journalists and 13.3% of journalists in daily papers. The numbers of, for social media are projected to be even worse. So keep that in mind because minorities, in fact, of some kind, make up almost 40% of the U.S. population. And the pipeline is shrinking. Minorities made up 21.4% of graduates with degrees in journalism or communications between 2004 and 2014. But less than half of minority graduates found full-time jobs. Two-thirds of white graduates did. How can we expect to do a job of telling the true story of America if we don't represent it, both in front of the camera and behind the scenes? And here's the good news, the news that keeps me hopeful that we'll get through this. Even as young people flock to social media, where it's often hard to distinguish fact with fiction, they're flooding journalism schools in the hopes of entering the profession. And it's my hope that eager young journalists like you will flood our newsrooms, that news organizations, particularly my friends in TV and on social media, will listen to you, new journalists. They'll recognize that their hunger out there for facts and context and expertise over entertainment and chatter. They'll see that there is a business case to be made for diversity and authenticity and expertise and reporting. So get out there and help the media get better by speaking up about what you want to see and you want to hear and what you want to read and what you want to report on by telling people like me and your future bosses that it might be fun to play politics like a game where people are nothing more than chess pieces, but you care about real issues like climate change and charter schools and public health and public policy and troops fighting abroad and the economy here at home. And you want to dig into facts and data and details and statistics and numbers and tell those stories from diverse perspectives. You don't need pundits to help people make up their minds because you have something better, facts and data. You just need to report those facts with context and you can do it. So congratulations, the class of 2020. You have been through a lot, but we are exceedingly proud of you and we picture very big things for you. And even more than that, and most importantly, we need you really desperately. Thank you. Thank you, Soledad. And now, the moment many of you thought might never come. Dean Bartlett, at this commencement, we recognize 98 candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Journalism, including 10 graduates of the Spanish Language Program, and 11 candidates for the Master of Arts in Social Journalism. Here are our candidates. Benjamin Howard Abrams, Carla Arroyo, Max Walton, Alexa Fire, Diane Bazooka, Kayla Boone. Carolyn Brown. Delvin Brown. Megan Burney. Shoshana Buxbaum. Bryce Bayaki. Savani Campos. Macarena Carisosa. Ambar Castillo. Susanna Cavanaugh. Benjamin Chambers. Yasmin Chisholm, Kirkpatrick B. Koal, Mary Conlon, Moncaper Conte, 
Jocelyn Azucena Contreras, Danielle Cruz, Holly Love Deaton, Holly DeMuth, Christine DeRosa, Francis J. DeFiore, Allison Dekanovich. Delaida Espinoza, Matthew Isaiah El Saraga, Gus Fisher, Terence Jelani Umavi Frazier, Fifi Frempong. Sarah Gabrielli, Teresa Gaffney, Nick Gallagher, Amanda Gladowski, Ariel Goodman. Rachel Green Roman Gressier Jackie Harris Brooke Henderson Catherine Jill Hershenroder Layla Maiden Valen EVC Bar Will Johnson Joseph Jungerman Simi Kadragama Colin Kern Minji Koo Maddie Kornfeld Francesca Krempa Caroline Letty Noel D. Lilly Leonardo March Corey Samuel Matthews Victoria Umba Jonas Elisa McPherson Oscar Molina Malik Morris Ana Lucia Murillo Yara Elmore Violetta Nespolo Z in Gamma May Alvera Ariel Pacheco Arno Pedram John Philp Luca Powell Sophie Putka Parker Quinlan 
Emilce Kiros, Hafsa Kureshi, Ashley Rodriguez, Michaela Roman, Josh Rosenberg. Madison Rufo, Lisa Marie Salinas, Isoke Asabi Samuel, Kelsey Sandoval, Peter Sanzamichi. Jill Shaw, Samantha Shanahan, Sam Sharp, Rachel Sherman, Catherine Smith, Ryan. C. Songalia Arlen Sorto Paul Strempel Sonia Swink Kevin Truong Cheyenne Renee Ubiera Jesse Vod Stephen Vago Buzz von Ornsteiner Bai D. Wong Jacob Wasserman, Erica Ann Wheelis, Kent M. Wilhelm, Daisy Joy Williams, Rawan Salwa Yagi, Shezel. Zahid. Dean Bartlett, I request that you confer upon them the degree of Master of Arts in Journalism and Master of Arts in Social Journalism. By the authority that the Regents of the State of New York and the CUNY Board of Trustees have committed to me, I confer upon you the degree of Masters of Arts in Journalism and Masters of Arts in Social Journalism, thereby granting you all the rights and privileges that pertain to those degrees. Well then, it's official. The Newmark Graduate School of Journalism has its 14th class of graduates, and you are now all members of one of the most exclusive networks in New York City, the Newmark J School Alumni. Please join me with an enthusiastic round of applause.